Thanks for watching Wood and Shop. I'm Joshua Farnsworth. When I first got started in woodworking, one of the things that confused me the most was choosing lumber. I didn't know how to choose stable wood. I didn't know hard versus soft wood. I didn't know what board feet meant. I didn't know what quarter saw meant. It was so confusing. So after all these years of woodworking, I've now uh, learned all those things, but I want to save you all that time and just teach you the basics so that you can actually get out to your lumber yard or to your local mill and choose lumber without looking like a dummy. I'm here at uh, one of my favorite places to get wood, uh, at a little place here just a few miles outside of Charlottesville, Virginia, very close to Thomas Jefferson's Monticello home. And I'm going to walk you through this lovely little mill and show you some of the things that I look for and some of the things that I do in, when uh, choosing lumber so that I make sure that I get the most beautiful and the most stable wood that will be the best for the furniture that I make with my hand tools. The first thing I like to consider when I'm buying wood for a project is a hardwood or a softwood. Uh, you know, wood uh, hardness is determined by, uh, I think it's called the Janka test or something. They put a little steel ball in wood and they'll compress it and see how far, how much pressure it takes to go down into the wood. So, uh, you know, wood like this, white oak, is quite a bit harder than, say, uh, a soft pine. So on the accompanying blog post, I'll share a list with you that shows the, uh, the different hardness of different types of lumber. Uh, you know, hardwood is usually more expensive than softwood, so you want to just decide what you're making. Um, you know, for example, in a violin, a violin uses both hard maple and a softer spruce uh, for, for different uh, resonation in music. A workbench may have a hard maple top, you know, which is where the majority of the money goes, and then the bottom isn't going to be taken pounding, so you can use like a soft yellow pine. So it just all depends on what you're using and how, how, uh, how much you want it to stand up to abuse. And uh, so that's just kind of subjective. It's up to you to decide. The second thing I like to consider when choosing lumber is the grain structure, which determines the stability of the wood. Unless you're using a highly figured, beautiful wood for some front panel or something, you typically want something that's more stable. So uh, lumber, lumber companies uh, usually employ something called through and through cutting, which they'll take a log and then just slice it downward. And within that, there's different, uh, different types of cuts. Uh, so there's flat sawn, which on uh, maybe a board like this or uh, something like this, you'll have the grain curving like that. And that's very unstable. It's a cheaper way for them to mill uh, but it doesn't do very good for furniture because it will cup or twist. And that's something you need to look at as well when you're choosing lumber is if it's cupping or twisting. But the next type of cut um, that you'll usually find, and it's usually uh, different parts of those cuts, or you can on the, even on the sides of, of the flat sawn board, is uh, quarter sawn. You can see here a lot of these boards are quarter sawn. It's because they have vertical grain. The more vertical the grain is across there, the more stable the board will be, and it's better for furniture. You can see this white oak is very popular. Uh, what it does is it produces like a uh, reflex, just beautiful reflex, which is really popular in arts and crafts type of furniture. Uh, and there's also something called rift sawn. Rift sawn boards are usually at, a, at an angle like this, 30 to 60 degrees for rift sawn. Quarter sawn, the indice strander is 60 to 90, I think. Uh, but anyway, wrist sawn is still pretty stable, not totally stable, but, but the, uh, it gives you very straight grain on top of the face, uh, which can be really neat for more of a contemporary look. Maybe kind of boring if you're looking for something a little more fl flourishy, <laughs> if that's a word. Uh, but then the, the, uh, the, most, the most stable wood that you can get is riven wood, which is done with your own muscles and your own power, use, usually using a, uh, usually using uh, wedges uh, to actually rive the wood out and then a fro and a mallet to split, split it so that you have perfectly vertical grain. So that's the most stable. So uh, typically, unless you have your own source of, of lumber, 
Uh, that's not something that you're going to be doing on your own, although I'll share some videos how to do it later. But uh, usually try to stick with quarter sawn wood. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that most mills, they're not going to have all their wood set aside as quarter sawn. So it's a good practice to take your block plane, a very sharp block plane out with you so that you can actually uncover some of the end grain if you can't see it to make sure you've got that vertical grain. That's the key to stable furniture. The next thing that I like to consider when uh, at the lumber yard is looking for defects in the wood, such as knots. Knots are very hard to plane with a hand plane. Uh, Wormholes you can see inside of uh, usually the sapwood. I usually try to avoid sapwood or be willing to cut it out. Uh, wood that's uh, checking, you know, it's got splits going down the end grain. Uh, just see how far those go. Uh, twisting or wind. Uh, check, uh, let's see, there's a whole bunch of things that can be wrong with the wood. So just look at the side of the wood and uh, make sure that it's not totally twisted because that's going to take a lot of work to get flat. So choose the best boards you can and avoid those defects if at all possible. So where should you buy your lumber? I really like to use these local mills. The prices are usually better and there's a really good selection typically and the guys are just uh, fun to deal with. And, uh, but uh, if you don't have a local mill like this one here, this beautiful mill, uh, you can expand your search to uh, a hardwood dealer. Uh, they have a lot of select, they have a high selection. Uh, mail order, I, I wouldn't prefer, but uh, well, I guess it depends on, on the reputation of the hardwood dealer but uh, I, I typically like to inspect the wood, but a lot of times they don't want to have angry customers, so that might be a good option. I haven't tried it. Uh, places, if you live in a city, and you might have a woodcraft close by. That's a good option. They have smaller quantities. They don't do a lot of volume, so their prices will be higher, but if you're in a city and you don't have any other choice, that's a good option. Some people say to stay away from big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot, but uh, uh, I actually learned from Roy Underhill when I was in one of his classes that he buys his wide <laughs> two by twelve pieces because on the on the ends of of those big wide boards or where they've cut it straight down the middle of the tree is actually good quarter sawn pine. It's like uh, I think it's called the uh, construction lumber or something. Uh, so there there's. Uh, in the blog post, I'll share some uh, links to resources of some of the areas that you can, f some of the pl places that you can find lumber in your area and, or some reputable online, uh, online or mail order wood dealers if, if uh, you don't have access any other way. Another way to avoid looking like an idiot at the lumber yard is to know how to speak about board thickness. In the lumber industry, they use quarters. An inch thick, uh, which I believe this is, would be called four quarter. Four divided by four equals one. Six quarter, six over four, would mean an inch and a half. Uh, eight quarter, eight over four, would equal two inches thick, and so on and so forth, all the way up. So keep that in mind and practice it in front of the mirror so you don't uh, feel stupid when you go to the lumber yard. Another thing uh, that you want to know is how to calculate board feet. Board feet is a way that lumber sellers uh, calculate how much to charge for the lumber. So what you would do is carry a tape measure with you and measure the thickness of the board, multiply that by the width of the board in inches, inches both, and then multiply that by the length of the board in inches and divide all of that by 144 and that will give you board feet and then you can multiply that by whatever the, the their price is for board feet. Certain hard woods will be higher price for board feet, certain soft woods will be on the lower end. So that will really help you to know what you're going to pay before you go and check out. The last thing that I like to consider is uh, wood moisture. It's a good idea to bring a, to bring a moisture meter with you, a good moisture meter that's got high, high, high reviews on it. I'll share some links to some that I've found. Uh, Glenn Huey from Popular Woodworking Magazine wrote, uh, wrote a, a little article about a, a debate on the moisture and whether you need to acclimate it to your shop. He said that if, it's, uh, if you stick it in and there's 22 percent moisture or less, then there's, he hasn't found in his experiments 
that you need to let it acclimate for very long in your shop before you, before you uh, work it. Uh, if on the other hand it's over 22%, uh, it's a good idea to put it somewhere, put it on some of these with these little spacers in, be in between and let it sit in your shop for a little while. If you're, if you are, uh, if you are uh, riving your own wood, uh, definitely wait until the moisture has gotten down uh, to a lower level. So I hope I have demystified a lot of that there is to know about choosing lumber. There is uh, th th this this uh, subject can get much more complicated, and I encourage you to find greater resources and study up more on it. In the accompanying blog post, I'll definitely uh, share a lot of resources where you can learn more advanced uh, wood science or even just uh, understand wood a little bit more. And uh, but I just wanted this to be a very simple introduction. So. Thanks for watching, and if this has been helpful to you, then please subscribe up there at the blue button. And thanks for watching Wood and Shop. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com, where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts, and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!